Hello everyone and welcome to Hanging Ponds, this is Stepan. I'm going to continue the analysis of round 4 of the candidates tournament we just finished. Uh, I must say I'm delighted with the way the games went and all players but Wesley Sohan have shown amazing fighting spirit and produced brilliant games this round, unlike yesterday when, where they've been, there have been a lot of draws and boring draws as well. Wesley uh, drew Mamediaro with black, so he is still in last place, and the game I'm about to show you is absolutely brilliant. In, in it, Karyakin had the white pieces against Aronian, and he had only one point before this round with two draws, and Aronian had two points, winning one game and drawing two. So th both players were definitely looking for a win here, Aronian to catch up with Kramnik, who, who is in the lead, and Karyakin to get bet back on track and get in the running to win. A second play place means absolutely nothing in the candidates and you have to win in order to challenge Magnus later this year. So winning is the only thing that matters. In this game Sergei opened with pawn to d4, we have knight to f6 by Aronian, c4, e6, inviting the Nimtso Indian defense, but Karyakin declines with knight to f3, we have d5, knight to c3, now entering a queen's gambit declined position, bishop to b4, pinning the knight, bishop to g5, and d takes c4, the Ragozin system of the queen's gambit declined and the mega sharp Vienna variation. It is well, well known and theoretically well analyzed, but still it's uncommon to have it seen in such a strong tournament. e4, by Karyakin in true fighting spirit, a more passive but more solid move would have been e3, but they are both theory. c5, Aronian also chooses uh, a fighting variation, a fighting continuation, not going for some defensive responses. And now the main line of the Vienna, bishop takes c4, c takes d4, knight takes d4, bishop takes c3 check, wrecking white pawn structure, bishop, bishop, uh, sorry, b takes c3 and queen a5 the sharpest move, targeting the undefended c-pawn. In this position, uh, Karyakin chose to play bishop to b5, check, and there is still more than 400 games from this position and it's well known theory still, but it's wonderful to see such a volatile line being played in such a crucial event for both players. I have to say that I expected them, and especially Karyakin, who, who had a much worse result in the first three rounds, to enter the Royish Royal Lopez or the Berlin, but they both seemed to be pushing for a win this game. And White has a small theoretical advantage here, not a big one, but he has a lead in development and a useful bishop on, on g5. And he can exploit the fact that the, the black knight on f6 is pretty awkwardly placed. And here, uh, it's the Vienna is definitely something worth learning, a line which is pretty useful, because if your opponent doesn't know the theory, you could end up winning some easy games. Uh, Aronian... Uh, plays knight b to d7, the main move, and now Karyakin plays bishop takes f6, doubling Aronian's pawns as the knight on d7 is pinned by the bishop, but in exchange Aronian gets to take on c3 with check as an uh, intermezzo or a twitch so queen takes c3 check, queen to f1, king to f1, sorry, note that queen to d2 uh, blocking the check would immediately lose to queen takes a1 because the rook would be hanging. Uh, we have g takes f6 now, recapturing the bishop, and h4 by Karyakin, the, the best move in the position, expanding and exploiting the fact that Aronian's king is still in the center. It's also the fastest way to get the h1 rook in into the game, because the white can no longer castle and the king is on f1, and he would have to play g3, king g2, and rook e1 rook e to get the rook into the game, this is just much faster. And the queen is on c3 anyway, so he can gain a tempo, if the rook gets on h3. Uh, we have queen to b4, the queen retreats from the tempo square, rook to b1, attacking the queen, and queen to d6. Uh, in this position now, Karyakin does develop his, his rook to h3, the, the most active move, and a6. And here, Karyakin, uh, when Aronian forced, to, uh, forced his bishop away, he should have captured on d7. It was the only move that kept equality or even a small advantage for him and instead he retreated, and now Aronian is taking over the initiative, and generally in, in any position, if possible, retreating moves should most often be avoided, as generally they worsen your position, as you are getting your opponent time, giving your opponent time to reorganize and change the nature of the position to his advantage. So, Sergei retreated to e2, 
with the bishop and in this specific position this retreat has an obvious and a severe consequence immediate consequence because Aronian is now able to play a knight move since the knight is no longer pinned he plays knight to c5 targeting the weak e4 pawn which isn't really defended easily it can't be defended easily if uh, Karyakin had played f3 defending uh, the pawn then Okay, it's not immediately losing, but the position is much better for, for black after e5, chasing the knight away, knight f5, trading uh, trading the queens, and capturing the knight on f5. And after e takes f5 and king e7, for example, black would stand much better. White rook is cut off from the game on h3, the pawn structure is terrible for white, and Aronian's king would be much more active in the coming endgame. So, Karyakin smartly didn't go for that variation instead after knight to c5 he played rook to c3 which <laughs> okay it's, it's a move i definitely can't understand a strange move which i would never even look at he gave the e pawn away with tempo with rook to c3 and aronian of course grabs the pawn knight takes c4 and now rook to d3 uh, looking at the queen on d6 and in this position, Aronian doesn't move the queen, he, do, he isn't afraid, he, he castles. The best move in the position, and once again, not an easy move to play for, for weaker players. You are relinquishing the possibility of putting the rook on the open g-file, but the move is solid, connecting rooks and getting your king safe before going on the complete offensive. Uh, Karyakin continues with queen to c1, we have queen e5, getting away from the stair of the rook on d3 bishop to f3 targeting the knight and f5 solidifying and in this position Karyakin plays queen to h6 centering black's posi position but with no real purpose at all Aronian wisely though retreats and offers a trade because it's never good to have your opponent's queen around your king he plays queen to f6 and the queens get traded queen takes f6 knight takes f6 and bishop to b7 bishop takes b7 Karyakin regains one of his pawns okay so bishop recaptures uh, rook captures and here Aronian has an extra pawn and Karyakin, Karyakin has no clear compensation for it. Visually all his pieces do look good but there is nothing he can do to improve and Aronian's doubled f pawns are actually keeping white pieces under control and helping him. This is one of the rare occasions when doubled pawns are strictly beneficial. There is no absolutely no, no downside to them. Uh, the game continues with rook a to c8 by Aronian activating the rook on the open file, the only uh, free file, rook to g3 check, once again an attack by Karyakin, but it doesn't really do much, king to h8, and now a very weak move by, by Karyakin, he plays rook g to b3, uh, a weak move by Sergei giving Aronian even more time to improve and increase his advantage, and he does play the best and the most active move knight to e4. Uh, rook to b3 was such a big mistake because now knight to e4 is threatening knight d2 check, winning the exchange, and it forces Karyakin to lose yet another tempo. He has to retreat and he, he retreats his rook to b2. And now rook f to d8, attacking the knight, and Karyakin retreats one, once more. This is The position is getting worse and worse for him. And in a matter of couple of moves, Saronian managed to restrain white's pieces so much and amplify, amplify his own that the position is now almost completely lost, which is very strange considering how it looks i mean the white rooks are active along the b file but there is nothing they, they can do there is nothing they can attack so okay he retreats the knight to b3 we have rook d1 check exploiting the fact that the king is stuck on f1 and that it can't retreat comfortably the king has to go to e2 and now knight to c3 check getting the king even in farther away into danger king to e3 and now Aronian plays a masterful move king to g7 showing the level of his skill. All his pieces stand well and he is in the middle of the attack. And the king is the only the only piece not taking part in the onslaught. He moves it slowly up the board and recognizes that it's to play an important role soon. So a brilliant move, which once again I would never even look at. So that that's why Aronian is 2800 almost. Uh, Karyakin continues with, G, with G3 not a good move it's it's it has almost no use for now king to f6 getting the king even closer and rook to a7 by Karyakin targeting the a pawn and here Aronian makes his first small mistake he defends with rook to c6 
Much better was to play an active move such as rook h1, preparing to target white's pawns, so, or even h5, locking them down and making them easy targets for, for a later attack. But his move still keeps, uh, still keeps most of his advantage. So after rook to c6, we have king f3, knight to b5, chasing the rook away, it retreats to a8, and d5. Once more, not the most precise move by Aronian, but from a human perspective completely justified as it highlights the ability to improve the position for black as opposed to white's pawns and pieces which have absolutely no prospects for now. King to g2, Karyakin realizes that he has no useful moves, there is nothing he can do. e4, advancing, and a4, chasing the knight away at least, and it goes to a3, preparing to re-enter the game uh, via the c4 square or, or c2. We have rook to d2, exchanging rooks or offering a trade, Aronian accepts, Rook d2, knight d2, and now a brilliant aggressive move by Levon, he plays e3. White uh, can't take really because it would lose the knight, and the position actually wouldn't be much worse than it is now with what he played, because Aronian at least wouldn't have a super strong pawn avalanche marching to queen, so if he had taken with f takes e3, then of course rook to c2 is just losing the knight, because if he defends with rook to d8, then Knight c4 is just winning the piece. However, um, he would have time to grab the a6 pawn and he would have definite compensation compensation for the piece because Aronian wouldn't have an easy time queening his f pawns and the game would probably end, end in a draw. But after e3, Karyakin decided not to lose a piece. He played knight f3. And now rook c2, of course, the pawn is pinned, so now Aronian is now definitely able to, to grab the f2 pawn. Rook a6, grabbing the, the a6 pawn with check. King to g7, knight to, uh, to d4 by Karyakin, and rook takes f2. Uh, he retreats to g1, knight to c2, offering a trade. Knight takes, rook takes, and this exchange is was a great move by Levon. He, re he realizes that Sergei's king is now cut off from the game and that his extra pawn becomes more and more significant with less pieces on. And this position is now completely over and perhaps Karyakin should have resigned here. He fought on a bit though. The game went on with king f1. We have a rook f2 check, king to e1, rook g2 targeting the g3 pawn, rook b6, rook takes g3, rook b4, defending uh, h4 and a4, rook g2, still keeping the king cut off from the game, rook f4 targeting uh, f5, the king defends, rook f3 targeting e3, and now Aronian decides to exchange a couple of pawns, he gives up his e3 advanced pawn by playing rook g4, rook e3, rook takes a4, a trade which definitely benefits Aronian as now Karyakin has absolutely no hope. His a, his a pawn was his only passer and at least he could have caused some trouble with it. He plays king to f2, rook takes h4 and now three pawns up for Aronian, completely winning but he still has to convert the position though as it's not too rare for rook endgames to be drawn even several pawns up, especially if the pawns are doubled. Uh, the game continues with rook to e8, trying to get behind black's king, rook g4, king to f3, King to g7, not giving uh, Karyakin the possibility to play rook g8. And this is now a slow, torturous grind for Karyakin, and I can only imagine how he must have felt trying to draw such a miserable position. Uh, the game lasted a few more moves. We have rook to e5, king f6 defending uh, the f5 pawn, rook e8, h5, finally advancing his passed pawn, and notice how the king is now cut off from the g and h files as well, because the rook is defended by the f5 pawn. Uh, rook h8, getting behind the pawn, king to g6, defending with the king, king f2, rook to g5, king to f3, king g7, rook a8, and h4, continuing the, the push, king f2, and there is nothing Sergei can do, he can't defend with the king, his rook is completely useless because the king isn't allowing it to go to h8 or g8, and I mean, it's busted, there's not much to say about the position. h3 by Levon, rook a3, rook h5 getting behind the pawn, king to g1, now he finally manages to get the king a bit closer, king to g6, and Aronian is marching up the board as well, king h2, stopping the pawn for now, 
and he continues, he just continues pushing his other pass pawn, f4, rook a7, f3, rook a1, f2, and I mean, what are you doing, Sergei? Just, just resign, just give up. Rook f1, he tries to stop the pawn. And in this position, a brilliant move, rook f5, king takes h3, king g5, king to g3, and rook f4, and here finally Sergei gave up. He can, of course, uh, regain uh, one more pawn. He can play rook takes f2, and after rook f2, king f2, but that would be a simple king, uh, king and pawn endgame end in which black is several tempi up and he can gain the opposition and he's in front of the pawn so those positions are always winning i can i can show you the the the, the end game so let's say this happened in this position black can play whatever he wants he can just he can play king f5 or king f4 and it's it's busted he has two tempi and he can move the pawn to f6 and then to f5 to get the opposition and there is nothing white can do about black queening so yeah definitely one of the most exciting games in the candidate so far and a brilliant win by aronian he just completely overran karyakin who once again didn't didn't do too well i mean he's still at one point after four rounds and i must say i'm extremely disappointed in the, in, in his performance because I expected him to do much better considering that he managed to, to win the candidates last time and that he is super strong but perhaps he is choosing openings which aren't fit for him perhaps he should have gone for a Roy Lopez or the Berlin something more passive because these kinds of positions definitely suit uh, Levon much more uh, Levon is now at three out of four definitely a great score and perhaps he is even going to catch up with Kramnik uh, after this round because Kramnik's game is not over yet and let's see how he does in the rest of the tournament. I hope he does well, because I, I considered him to be one of the favorites before it started, and now he's proving to be a strong contender to, to win the candidates. Okay, everybody, thanks very much for watching. If you like the video and if you're new here, please consider subscribing and stay tuned for more videos from the candidates. Cheers. Bye.